Hi, friends. My name is Dory Clark. I teach for Duke University's Fuqua School of Business and Columbia Business School. And I am here on behalf of Newsweek for our weekly interview show, Better. And we have a special guest this week, Jeffrey Hall. Jeff is the author of the new book, Flex. And we are going to be talking today about something pretty relevant and powerful for leaders at any time, but I would venture to say, especially now, which is the question of how do you become more flexible, more adaptable, and have more emotional intelligence as a leader? Jeff, welcome. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, I'm so glad to, to chat with you. And I'd like to welcome all of the folks who are tuning in live as well. If you are here live, please feel free to type your, your name and where you're from into the comment box because we want to uh, give a shout out to you. We'd love to hear where everybody is, uh, is coming in from. Uh, so please feel free to do that. But let me actually just kick off, Jeff, with a question for you. Because one of the things that I thought was most interesting in your work, uh, including your book, Flex, is that you talked about the rise of the beta leader. We right. we all have this, this sort of vision of what a leader is, and yeah. typically that leader has been somebody pretty aggressive, pretty, uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lead the charge up the hill. You are suggesting that the modern leader may actually be more effective looking a little bit different. Uh, talk to us about beta leadership. Yeah, no, that's absolutely true. I think uh, that was kind of where the initial idea for this book was born was, I have to say, it started It started back um, at a confluence of two simultaneously uh, occurring events. One, when I was coaching leaders at a hospital up in Boston, and I was actually working with surgeons, which talk about alpha leaders, right? Um, at the same time that I was teaching a C-suite leadership class like you do at Duke, where I was teaching um, master's degree students in leadership at NYU. And two things happened at once. Once One of those was that I was sitting in the classroom with about 25 students, graduate students, mostly millennials. And I realized that the, the variety of the students was unbelievable. Like they came from literally 25 folks sitting in a class and they were from countries all over the world. They were from Asia. They were, there were students from Egypt and the Middle East and Europe and Americans. And they all just had this incredible multicultural viewpoint in terms of their view on what leadership was. And as we would have dialogue around what does it mean to be an effective leader, I realized it's sort of the traditional I would call it authoritative. I called it, you know, we call it the alpha male kind of approach to leadership was really alien to a lot of these folks because they come from so many different cultures, but they're working in global teams. And so I started to realize that what it was going to take for them to be successful as they grew into entrepreneurs and took on leadership roles because they're sitting on the cusp of that was going to be very different. And I didn't want to teach them the old way of being. I wanted them to think about themselves, to to actually reflect on their strengths and to utilize their strengths, which might be very different than sort of that traditional authoritative approach. And then in parallel to that, I was working with some surgical leaders at one of the big hospitals in Boston. And I noticed there that, you know, when they were doing surgery, as you can imagine, they're like airplane, airplane pilots and they're like, you know, running the surgery and they're very directive and they, you do this and hand me that and cut here and, you know, and you would hope that, right? I mean, I don't want to go under the knife from someone who's not an alpha, right? But what I noticed in some of the most effective leaders is that right after they would take off their scrubs, two hours later, they would be in a meeting with their colleagues and they would be completely different. They would be facilitating. They would be consensus building. They'd be quieter. They would be listening. They'd be curious. And I was like, wow. These are a really effective dance that you can do as a leader to, de to demonstrate more agility. And so that's where I started to reflect on the possibility that we could be more as effective leaders than just sort of this alpha authoritative leader. I wanted to teach about beta leadership, which is what I consider to be a more collaborative, consensus building, curious, inclusive, um, respecting diverse perspectives, really bringing people all together to get the best out of everyone. 
And yet at the same time, there are moments if you're, if you're going into surgery where you need that authoritative alpha. So it's not an either or proposition. And that's what I wound up researching and writing about in the book Flex. That's really fascinating, Jeff. Thank you for sharing that. And I just want to give a shout out to some of the great folks who are joining us live here. Thanks so much. I see Anna is here. We have Trisha from Quakertown, Pennsylvania. Jenny oh, wow. from New York. We have Robin from Connecticut. Uh, Shalina from Atlanta. Steve from New York. Michael from New Jersey. Wow, we got, we got Tri-State in the house. <laughs> uh, we have Mike from Scottsdale. Uh, Jeannie is here from Bend, Oregon, hopefully. Hopefully uh, not so smoky now. We've got yeah, Veronica right. and we have some international friends too. We've got, uh, oh, we've got Ava from Toronto. This is great. I see De Silva from Brazil, Rosinda from Mexico and Carlos from Colombia. Evan from Waco. Thank you all so much, guys, and uh, and more. Juliana from uh, from Virginia. Adriana from Brazil. Uh, for no, from See? Berlin. There you go. That's this awesome. This is fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, if you're tuning in late, please feel free to uh, to type type in. Wow, I don't understand even what is going on with that. So we're, we're going to just make that stop. Uh, but anyway, uh, the next question that I have for you, Jeff, is I am, uh, I am curious. You also used a term that I think is quite fascinating and uh, in, in the book Flex. And you talked about what you call a post-heroic leader. And I, right. I know this ties in in some ways with the alpha and beta concept, but what do we mean by post-heroic? Well, yeah, no, it's it's true. I, I've, I'm actually a big fan of the folks that write about, you know, leadership or life as a hero's journey. Um, you know, Joseph Campbell, of course, made that mythic journey that we're all on towards the heroic uh, pinnacle, um, extremely well known in our culture. But at the same time, in today's world, you know, if you think about what Hillary Clinton wrote, you know, it takes a village. And I think in today's flatter, networked, um, sort of more democratized organizations, there's really less room for someone to be on a singular sort of ride in the white horse po uh, hero mindset as a leader. Um, as I said before, that might be appropriate in sort of an emergency situation, you know, the, the person who rides in and saves the day. But I think for the most part in today's organizations, it's really a group effort. You know, leadership is really, and organizations that are effective and innovative are really looking to get the best out of everyone. And so, you know, my intention was really to touch the hearts of those folks that think of themselves maybe as a bit of a reluctant leader. They might be an introvert. They might be a bit quieter. They might not be, consider themselves to be sort of charismatic and always out front, but they are still have that ability to be impactful to make a difference, to be influential, to maybe bring together a community to change the world, right? So that kind of leadership I'm calling post-heroic because it's not really about one singular individual sort of riding off into the sunset. It's about pulling together all of us and creating communities of change. And in today's world, you know, going through what we're going through with the pandemic and us all working virtually, you know, I was seeing this kind of acceleration toward what I'm calling a post-heroic leadership environment a couple of years ago happening, but now it's really urgent. Now it's really accelerated. And, you know, at the end of the day, what I really wanted to get across with this idea of post-heroic leader was that everyone, no matter what background, no matter what culture, no matter what gender, no matter what level of diversity, has the opportunity to step up and lead. It's it's like a we-based leadership rather than a singular individual. Yeah, thank you very much, Jeff. I think that's that's a really important point. And uh, just to greet a few more people who have come in here, thank you so much. I see Pinku from London. I see uh, Janice from Boston, Troy from DC, Evelina from Poland, Ethel from Texas. This is great. Jerry from New York City. We're glad to have you guys here. If you're enjoying the conversation, please hit like, please, uh, please sh hit share so more friends can discover this conversation. And we also are going to be taking your comments and, uh, and questions. So please type them into the chat box. We'd love to hear your questions for Jeff about leadership, about uh, you know, really anything related to how to uh, be a better leader, a better executive, a better entrepreneur. 
entrepreneur in today's uh, society. And uh, people already are, are getting some of your uh, your gems here. Jeff Todd says, uh, managers try to get the most out of people. Leaders try to get the best out of them. It's a great uh, right. a great pull quote there, which is uh, pretty powerful. But uh, another comment that came through, Anna says, uh, thank you, Anna. Coaches like you help us all move forward to a better world with courage, passion, uh, and, you know, and also compassion. So to that end, a question that I have for you, Jeff, I know that you are really involved in Harvard's Institute of Coaching. Right. And, uh, that's a place that I, I've spoken for before. You yeah. run regular programs there. Um, this is an interesting time right now during, during COVID. Coaches are the people that are helping other people, helping leaders, and you are helping to, to sort of build a community. But I, I can imagine that there may be some sort of stresses and strains as, as so many executive coaches wonder, in this environment, how can we actually be of service? How can we keep morale up? How can we actually do the work that we need to to help other people? What are you noticing and observing in the coaching profession right now? Well, yeah, I mean, change is just, uh, we're all in an in incredible disruption with the pandemic, with socioeconomic issues, with cultural shifts going on. Um, and I think that uh, coaching has become a support mechanism for even more leaders than in the past. And it behooves us as coaches actually to do our own work and to be role models for our, the leaders that we work with. I mean, one of the things that I'm very committed to is developing the coaching skills in the leaders I work with, you know, lead, what we're calling leader as coach. You know, the most powerful and effective leaders these days, I think, are coaches themselves. And one of the best way to develop your own coaching skills as a leader is to have the experience of being coached, to be in a situation where you're open to feedback, where you're actually reflecting on your own blind spots where you're thinking about understanding and knowing your strengths and also becoming aware of your growth edges. And this is becoming extraordinarily important in today's environment because we're all kind of in a bubble, right? And you know, leaders are trying to connect with teams virtually and they're not able to have sort of the, as many of the water cooler conversations that they might've had in the past. And they know that with their team, anxiety levels are high. And so things like emotional intelligence and health and wellness and being present with your, uh, with your subordinates or with your team is becoming crucial to the success of leaders today. So, you know, coaches are really, I hope, I think of them as being kind of at the vanguard for being models for how do we create an environment of psychological safety, of connection, of social cohesion, you know, you started out today talking about emotional intelligence. I mean, there was a time, I think, when emotional intelligence was kind of in the background, right? And, you know, leaders were thought of as being more intellectually decisive and directive. But in today's environment, creating an environment where people feel safe, where we can kind of let our hair down and be human, you know, being vulnerable and being humble are really becoming crucial markers of successful leadership. And hopefully as coaches, that's what we are supporting ourselves and our clients to focus on. Yeah, Jeff, thank you for that. That's I think that's really an important point. And there's a question related to it, actually, that came in from Ava from uh, coming in from Toronto. She right. wants to know, can you talk more about authentic leadership? Uh, because there may be a, a contradiction in there. If we're if we are so much ourselves, uh, doesn't that actually make it harder to flex in some ways? How do we balance that out when we might need to fulfill different roles or be different in different moments? How do you think about that, Jeff? Oh, that's such a great question, because I think part of authenticity is having an awareness of one's strengths and being confident and, and being clear on what you do well, but then at the same time, having a sense of humility like recognizing that we're all on a learning journey. You know, there's a lot of really good research and writing now about the learning mindset or the growth mindset. And so to be able to hold both of those together and have a sort of wisdom about yourself, like I know I'm really good at X, Y, and Z, 
but I also know that there are people better than me. I want to hang around with people that are smarter than me. I want to hang around and with Dory Clark, who's just amazing at creating experts because she's an expert. But there's a certain amount of humility, Dory, that I experience when I'm with you. So there's this wonderful balance and a truly authentic leader of being competent, of being confident, but also being humble. And I really see that as being an aware, having a social and self-awareness of our being on a learning journey. And if you can get into that mindset that, you know, you can actually be a leader and start up a company when you're 22 years old and be really incredibly effective and humble. And, but you can also be, you know, in your 60s and have blind spots. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a combination of authenticity is about being aware of your gifts and your strengths, and then also having that sort of meta awareness that you don't know it all. As Aristotle said, you know, the more we know, the more, less we know, right? And just having that sense of uh, humility is really key, I think, to authenticity. Yeah, thank you. I, I think that's that's really right on, Jeff, and certainly jives with my experience. And I will just mention for those of you who are tuning in live, please feel free to ask your questions for Jeffrey Hull, author of Flex. Type them into the chat box. We'd love to hear what's on your mind and uh, take any of your questions about leadership or the current state of affairs in uh, in this crazy world, in these crazy workplaces. We'd love to hear what's on your mind. Uh, but in the meantime, I actually had another question for you, uh, Jeff, uh, like, like all good business authors, you created an acronym <laughs> and, <laughs> and I, I like your acronym because I have to say it's very Beyonce. Jeff, Jeff believes that all leaders need to be, are you ready? I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the hands. All leaders need to be fierce. Fierce, right. <laughs> so tell us Jeffrey Hull, how, <laughs> how do leaders become fierce? They need to, what, they need to flex. Mean? <laughs> oh yes, they do. They need to be. They need to be fierce, and they need to, to flex. So this That's is powerful. Right. Hit That's us. Right. What What does fierce stand for? Well, you know, fierce is. Uh, I have to give credit to my yoga instructor. So you know, it's like you got to you got to give credit where credit is due. So I have this amazing yoga instructor who was always teaching us how to be fierce, and it had to do with being humble and flexible and agile. And when I would get frustrated that I couldn't do some kind of pose that all the young fo uh, young folks in my class were doing, she was like, stick with it, Jeff, you're gonna be fierce. And I'm like, okay, I got it. So that's where the word fierce originated <laughs> for me. Um, uh, but the acronym actually came from a much more serious focus on the research of what we as coaches find ourselves focused on more and more often with clients. So I did a survey with about 1,200 coaches in a variety of focus groups and informal surveys and discovered that there were particular domains that leaders need to be aware of and work on. And that's where the coaches found themselves focused. And so it came out as, flat, as fierce. And so there, very quickly, there are six key domains. One is flexible decision-making. So again, back and forth between what I would call that alpha and beta style, flexible in making authoritative decisions, being the one that you know steps up and says, here's where we're going, guys, versus the beta decision-maker who builds the consensus, who, who, who leads from behind, but comes to a decision with a group. So flexible decision-making is the first in the F. I is about inspirational communication, intentional communicating. Everyone needs as a leader to learn how to use facts and figures and be rational and use data, evidence, but they also need to tell a story. They need to move people. So the intentional communication domain is how do you build your communication capabilities such that you're moving your audience emotionally and still having credibility? And the third, F-I-E, is, as you would expect, emotional intelligence or emotional agility. How do you work with your emotions so that you're emotionally connecting with folks, but you're also emotionally available to people, but you're not being overly dramatic? You know, you're not letting your emotions take over. So it's managing your emotions and becoming facile with emotional intelligence or emotionally agile. 
The third is actually what we talked about earlier, authenticity. And I just used the word realness to make it the acronym FEARS. But I'm really looking at the different dimensions of authenticity in terms of leadership. And we mentioned that earlier, where you need to be strong. Sometimes you need to be stoic. You need to de develop and exhibit competence. But you also have to be vulnerable. And you have to be humble. And you have to be open. And that is an incredibly unique combination of skills to develop as a leader. So realness. And then the next is collaborative skills. We're not doing leadership alone. We're doing leadership with a group. So how do you collaborate? How do you work with others? How do you show up physically, emotionally, and intellectually with a team? And then finally, how do you create an innovation situation, innovation environment? And that's the last letter of the FIERCE acronym, and that is engagement. One of the things that coaches are asked to do almost regularly with leaders is to create an environment that's both highly productive but also highly creative. And they're almost opposites. So it creates, it's a very different kind of energy to be super productive, right? Get your to-do list done, be very results oriented. But at the same time, how do you create an environment where people are flexible and fluid and coming up with new ideas and taking risks? Those are almost paradoxically opposites. And yet really good leaders can shift back and forth. That's where the agility comes in to be able to do both. So that's the FIERCE acronym. It's like the six key domains that I find that many coaches are working with their clients in today's world. That's quite powerful, Jeff. Thank you for sharing that. And a terrific question actually came in. I'll put this up on the board from Ana Rosa. She wants to know, I am, she says, I'm a true believer in emotional intelligence, but at a corporate level, how do you balance that? How do you balance emotional intelligence with the need to meet your KPIs, your, your key performance indicators? Um, obviously, these might be pushing in different directions. On one hand, you want to be supporting employee wellness. On the other, it's get it done, people. Uh, so how, right. do you, how do you thread that needle? Jeff? Well, it's a fabulously appropriate question for today's environment, right? Because I think maybe a year ago or two years ago, we would have said that getting things done and being highly productive and results oriented was the priority and that the emotions could probably stay in the back door or, or stay in the background. You know, you, you, didn't, you didn't have time for a lot of drama and there were the, the folks that were highly anxious or highly expressive. No, we don't have time for that. Let's just stick to the work. I think in today's environment, most of my clients and most of the leaders that I've seen that are highly effective have come to realize that creating an environment of more openness, more psychological safety, where people are feel a sense of connection, social cohesion, they have leaders need to make space for emotions. We're living in a really volatile, difficult time. And if you don't, if you don't have an openness and an awareness and, a, and an ability to bring those into the conversation, then you may not get stuff done. You may find people disappearing and not showing up. And you may find so there, there's dropouts or people losing track. So I would say that emotional awareness and taking emotions and feelings and anxieties and fears and concerns into account is actually crucial. It's like almost reverse from the way we've done it in the past. If I was gonna give advice to a leader, I would say, pay attention to what's going on with your team emotionally and pay attention to what's going on with yourself emotionally and be a role model for being open. Share your vulnerabilities. People let their hair down, they feel safer, they feel more relaxed and guess what? They're more productive, they get more done. Yeah, that's that's really interesting and really helpful, Jeff. Thank you. And I also just want to mention for, for all of you guys, if you are enjoying this conversation, I want to let you know we come here at noon Eastern, you know, same bat time, same bat channel, noon Eastern, nine Pacific, five o'clock Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, although, you know, check that because I think with daylight savings time, the conversion uh, might be a little different. But anyway, that's the general idea right now. Every single Thursday next week, uh, we're going to be tuning in uh, with Laura Vanderkam, a productivity expert and mother of five. And she's going to talk about how to be massively productive, uh, even, even when you have a ton of small children at home, which is wow. certainly pretty impressive. I want to hear about that. But to make sure that you never miss an episode, uh, make sure, you know, open a new browser window right now. Make sure on LinkedIn you are following Newsweek. 
you are following Dory Clark. That's me. And you are following Jeff Hall. Uh, we Thank would love you. to see you. And uh, so a, a new question came in actually just to, to sort of push the point a little bit further uh, okay. because these are, you know, kind of paradoxical things that we're talking about. I think they're right. really important. So Sheridan had a question. She wants to know, she says, authenticity carries some risk. Can you talk about how to read the culture so that maybe you can determine better when it's okay to show who you are or when you have to be a little bit more stealth about all of that? How, how do you determine that if you are in a culture where you worry it may just be a little dicey or a little bit risky for yourself? That's a really good question. I would say there's two key components to that in my mind. One is having a great deal of social awareness. So there's a combination here of effectiveness that is self-awareness, like knowing yourself and knowing who you are and how you want to be presenting yourself to the world as a leader or as an effective employee or a partner but also having social awareness. You know, what is the context? What is the level of safety? And yeah, not every environment is safe. And it, you know, I think it's, it behooves us all to sort of step back and say, okay, what is the environment like? And where, how do I present myself and what is appropriate? And then the second component of, what, of, of effectiveness in that is taking a look at your values, right? If the values of those around you are in alignment with yourself, then very likely you'll be able to open up and you can probably take more risks than you may realize. And that's how you step into your leadership is by taking the risk to be a little more transparent, be a little more open. And in today's environment where many of us are working from home and we, have, we may have kids or dogs or whatever, you know, just being more aware that we're all in this journey together and we're all vulnerable. And I think you can even as a employee or as a leader, you can step up and create a, an environment of safety where your values of respect and inclusion can actually create a sense where people do feel comfortable be just being themselves. And I encourage young people and even those that are, this is really the core theme of my book. Even if you're not an official leader, you can step up and lead. You can help create that environment of safety where we can be more open, where we can be ourselves, where we can be alpha and we can be beta. You know, Dory, it's actually very similar. I mean, I find that your wonderful work around the entrepreneurial you and reinventing the self is exactly parallel to what I'm writing about in Flex. You know, you're saying we all can develop our, our inner entrepreneur. We can step up at any level of our lives to be an expert and to show up who we are in the world. And I'm saying the same thing. Don't think you have to follow the rules. Take the risks. And if you're in the wrong environment or if you get backlash, that's feedback. That's data. You know, maybe I need to move on. Maybe I need to find a safer place to be. Yeah, Jeff, thank you very much for that. And Sheridan, thanks for the great question. Yeah, great for those question. of you, if you are enjoying this and you want to learn more about us and keep keep going with the conversation, again, that is jeffreyhull.com. You can learn more about Jeff and his book, Flex. If you'd like to stay in touch with me and make sure you never miss one of these sessions, go to my website, doryclark.com. You can sign up for my newsletter right off the site and uh, you will get notified about great things like this. So we're very excited to be in touch. And we have time, I think, Jeff, for one more question, a great one actually came in uh, from Carla. And let me see if I can uh, if I can find this here. Carla wants to know, many of us find ourselves working in a reactive and tactical environment. That's that's a lot of us these days. <laughs> so how do we apply strategic planning and lead with consistency for our teams when everything is changing around us? How do we how do we actually just see a little further out and and reassure the people uh, that, that are looking to us for guidance? Jeff, what are your thoughts about that important question? Oh, I love that question because I think it's we're all getting pulled in so many different directions and the environment, the political environment, the socioeconomic environment is so, so there's so much unrest and there's so much uh, disruption. At the end of the day, we have to do our own individual work, right? We have to step back. We have to give us ourselves time to take advantage of practices that we know will support our health and our wellness. You know, whether it's mindfulness practices, whether it's uh, yoga, 
whether it's exercise, even if you can't go to the gym, you can find, I found ways to exercise, right? You know, doing jumping jacks in front of the news um, or whether it's just like taking a bubble bath, but make sure that you find time in your day, in your life to reflect on where you are, where you want to be, where you want to go, and you give yourself resources, resources of support, support from people that you love, people that are part of your own inner network that you can let your hair down and be honest and, and share your concerns and your fears and support each other. It's like we can all have a coach. We can all be each other's coaches. And then finally, you know, definitely look to resources like Dory or like myself, because, you know, our passion in life is our commitment to supporting folks through these difficult times, right? To find the inner steel, the inner self awareness and strength to have a vision for how you wanna craft and move your life forward, no matter what's happening in the world. Because at the end of the day, you are the leader of your life. And you know, there are so many things going on on the planet and on, that we can't control. But what we can control is the way we show up as a role model for others. So that's what I would say to anyone, you know, that we're all feeling it, but we can, uh, we can really move things forward by being a role model. It's a powerful note to end on, Jeff. Thank you very much. And our, uh, our friend, our fellow author, Todd Churches, author of Visual Leadership, he has a, a great note here. He says, everyone is a leader if you are willing to step up. I just, totally agree. Amen, Todd. That's right. We <laughs> Thanks, <love it>. Todd. <laughs> yes. Oh, then thank you, Carlos. This is great. We're so glad that you guys joined. We look forward to seeing you uh, next Thursday, noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, 5 p.m. GMT. One of our great readers says, don't worry, it's still uh, 5 p.m. for a while. So uh, <laughs> so that is that is good. Uh, Jeff Hull, thank you so much for joining us again. Please feel his book is Flex. Uh, please follow Dory Clark, Jeff Hull, and Newsweek on your social platform of choice. And uh, Jeff, thank you for being here. Oh, thank you so much for having me. You are a role model for me. I love your work. I think that our passion for helping others and uh, bringing out the leaders and the experts and the entrepreneur and everyone are totally aligned. So uh, I love having a conversation with you. It's been a pleasure. That's great. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for joining us. Take care, guys.